Let's speak to Louise Waterich, who's a senior emergency officer for UNRWA, uh, the UN agency for Palestine refugees, and joins us now from Al Nusret camp in Gaza. Uh, Ms. Woodridge, good to have you with us on the programme. A lot to discuss. We'll take it step by step. What number of trucks are actually you receiving right now, and what should you have been receiving in the days preceding this interview? So the last few days, it's been around 30 trucks a day. That's three zero. Uh, I don't think I need to tell the viewers how little that is for a population of 2.2 million people who, as you say in your introduction, are, are hungry, are starving. There is no food available here. It's very, very difficult for families on the ground to have anything, any kind of substance. And the situation has become so dire here that once again we're seeing the situation where people are fighting over bags of flour, they're fighting over any any remaining cans of food and, and anything mm. in the area because it's that low in stock. Everything is a priority uh, as it comes through the gates into Gaza. Do you as an organisation get to choose what supplies come in or do you just open these trucks and perhaps are surprised by what you manage to receive? When you're only receiving around 30 trucks a day, it will never be enough. Even if you prioritize the needs, whether it's food, whether it's shelter for winterization, 30 trucks is not going to be enough for anybody. Uh, it's not going to fill the needs, but we basically are in a situation where we take what we can receive and we distribute it as soon as possible to the population. But, I mean, your colleagues are already saying in their reports, it's been an extremely violent day. It's really intensified military operations in the middle area where I am today. So there's also the safety involved in this mm. aid response. How on earth can humanitarians move aid from the borders to the people in need when there is shelling, when there is airstrikes, when there is drones, when there is Navy fire. That is what we've had for the last 24 hours, and it's making the humanitarian response here absolutely impossible. Well, I think you've answered my next question, which was that distribution. So let's move on to how many people you are physically allowed to help right now. I mean, what sort of numbers are you looking at with the very limited amount of aid that's coming in? We're trying to help everyone that we possibly can. I mean, this is through UNRWA running water wells. Our staff are on the ground. They repair these water wells. They try and provide as much fresh water to the community through these wells. Uh, you, it, that's repairing them. It's getting them working. A lot of the generators either run out of fuel or they get shot at or they get damaged in the military operations. In terms of food, we're distributing flour. We're providing families with flour and food packages as much as possible but it's really an emphasis to say as much as possible we've been able to provide some flour and some food assistance to families in northern gaza this is gaza city not in the areas that are currently besieged that's jabalia camp and other areas of north gaza governor but in gaza city and beach camp we have reached mm. some families but it's it's completely down to where we have access if we don't have the access provided we cannot provide the food to the people who need it and I think that's something that's come out in all of our reports and certainly our live interviews with our correspondents. But Ms Woodridge, as, as winter sort of draws in, what concerns do you have now about the need for more aid entering, knowing that UNRWA is an entity that the Israelis don't want to work with? I know that's a pretty difficult question. You're not a politician, you're not the official spokesperson for UNRWA, but you are at the pointy end of this, this conflict. Yeah, I mean, what I can tell you now is it's as bad, if not worse, than it's ever been. 500,000 people today are in danger of flooding in winter. If it rains tomorrow, if the rains come, the shelters that they live in will be flooded. They will have nowhere to sleep. They will have nowhere to exist. The rest of the Gaza Strip, that's 84 percent, is currently under evacuation orders. And then there's the bombing. Then there's the strike. So in terms of safety, we have been saying this all along. There is nowhere safe. That's for certain. There's nowhere safe. But what can you do when everybody needs everything and, and you're not getting enough supplies in? Winter is coming. It's, it's around the corner. People do not have enough. You see the makeshift shelters they're living under. It's under blankets, maybe curtains, really damaged pieces of fabrics. It might have maybe protected people from the sun in summer, but now in winter, when the rains come, people are going to be out in the cold and the rain. I think you can hear the bombardments around me. Right now, people are fleeing for their lives.
once again, people are fleeing for their lives. Mm. That is their main concern. And then there's food and then there's water and then there's shelter. People just need absolutely everything. Uh, Finally, Louise, if I could ask you perhaps to take your UNRWA hat off for a moment and speak to me as a civilian. You just talked about the bombs and the noise around you right now. You must be as frightened as anybody else that's in the Gaza Strip right now. Just as, as a civilian human being, just tell me how that, what it, what it feels like. It's absolutely terrifying. Today has been one of the worst days I've experienced in the Gaza Strip. I've been here since April. Um, I've, I've been here through the Rafa incursions. We've heard horrific stories in the north. We can't get to the north. It's besieged. But right now, with this bombing around us, with this constant bombardment, it, it's terrifying. People, families, you know, you can hear children crying, people screaming, people running for their lives. And it has been nonstop for 24 hours. There's nowhere to go. People are trapped. I think viewers forget they cannot leave the Gaza Strip. There is absolutely nowhere for people to go. They are fleeing from one place to another and getting bombed everywhere they go. It is terrifying. Louise Wartridge from UNRWA joining us there from El Nusrat camp in the Gaza Strip. It's good to get your first-hand, uh, a first-hand view of what's going on. Thanks so much, Louise. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.